Okay, a micro 410. Sorry, I couldn't figure out how to lecture live, but instead we're here in the field and I'll make some videos for you explaining the kind of hot springs that, they're, that we're working on in class. Um, so as you design your microbes, this is sort of the environment that I had in mind for those microbes. Um, so you can look here to this outflow right here. You can see that this hot water is coming out and you can tell it's hot obviously because you can probably see the steam. Um, plus we have this probe sitting in here. This is a multi probe and you can actually see, make sure it pulls down enough for me to touch. I have to be careful taking this cover. This, this is just a protective cover around it. And when I unscrew it, you can see the actual probes. And it's very handy because we can just drop it into anything. And each one measures a different thing. We have dissolved oxygen, which you know is super important because that's the best oxidant that we have around. And in these things coming out, it can be very limited. So we look at dissolved oxygen, we look at pH, we look at the turbidity of the water, so how much sort of entrained crap is in there, making it kind of dark. And we look at the total conductivity, which is called SPC. And that uh, lets us know kind of how, how saline it is, how salty it is. And these are all the variables that you guys are going to be um, uh, have to deal with in your special environments where you have to deal with high conductivity, you have to deal with the ions coming in or osmoregulation. Um, those are all things that we're looking for in these hot springs. And we're finding that they're really variable. Um, so the microbes that live here have to deal with a huge range in these, these factors. So if you look at this spring, you can, ah, you can tell, Whoa. oh crap. So you can tell, you can see the uh, orangey stuff right here. The orangey stuff is almost certainly microbial. We are not entirely certain. In fact, I've been having a Twitter conversation with some people who are much better experts than I am in um, hot springs and people are not quite sure what it is. Um, it's really, it's probably something entirely new that nobody knew about before. Um, but one cool thing you can see is that in the center, we have all this orange stuff. Do you see the green on either side? Just a little bit of green there and a little bit of green there, but no green in the center. So green almost always in nature means photosynthesis. So these are the phototropes that are sitting on the edges. And the reason why they can't be in the center is because they can't handle the heat. So you can generally look at a spring and find the temperature gradient as you move away from it by where the green starts. Um, it will only show up when the temperature drops just to a certain point and they can, they can sort of handle it. Um, so that's something we've seen in a lot of hot springs. We've seen greater color variation in some of the other ones. I'm not quite sure this one doesn't, why this one only has the two colors. Um, we've been seeing a lot of whites and um, purples and pinks too. Um, but that's, that's pretty much what's causing that. Um, <laughs> but the other thing that we have to deal with in this site is river water um, just and uh, runoff. So this is sort of not subsurface, not hot spring stuff. And we just kind of have to deal with that. Um, it would be lovely if we had a purely pristine sample that had never seen river water or rainwater ever and was just a source of deep microbes. But we don't have that, but that's okay. We deal with it.